Hey guys, today we have Greg Rogg in our podcast, who is a automation expert. He goes through how he manages seven plus YouTube channels with 10,000 subscribers. He also talks about all the different e-learning platforms he's built over the years and how he creates amazing value, unbelievable courses, which he sells for thousands of dollars, generates 10 to $20,000 per course a month, and how he does a lot of this on autopilot with a bunch of automation features. So tune in, it's gonna be an awesome episode. You're gonna learn so much and it's gonna help you save a lot of time. So see you soon. Greg, thank you so much for joining. I'm really excited to learn how you built so many companies and how you manage all these companies. Um, but thanks for joining the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. So starting out, I'd love to ask guests how they got started in what they're doing. Like, you know, what were the first few steps um, and for you, essentially building online educational learning resources for people. Yeah, so uh, the story, uh, that's a long story. I'm going to try to make it short. <laughs> but uh, I, I just remember just, uh, you know, fiddling with things on uh, with my computer and things on the Internet uh, since I just was, you know, 15 or maybe 14. So it started pretty pretty early for me and I, I started to earn from internet pretty early too. Uh, first, I was just uh, recording some uh, online tutorials and courses. And I basically, I started uh, with selling them on DVDs. And in Poland, where I come from, there's a like um, Amazon version of Amazon, it's called Allegro. And mm -hmm. I just burned those DVDs and I, I sold them online. <laughs> so this is how it started probably. <laughs> Maybe uh, like over on eBay years. or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I just uh, I had uh, I had to burn the DVD uh, myself. I had to send it via uh, our post office and stuff like this. And and people were learning Flash. I remember remember my first tutorials being Flash. So mm -hmm. I think that that uh, uh, the entrepreneurship and also the education part was always uh, part of my of my skill set, and I always wanted to do it. So and I and I did it i've been doing that ever since so i'm basically educating people and uh, also running some projects some some fun projects in in SaaS and fintech and 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 a bit uh, some others but my journey was was uh you know quite quite long and uh, it was pretty much around focused around education all the time hmm. and so where did you learn the skills before you made all these learning resources and courses and all that sort of stuff how did you how did you learn those skills to then teach and when did you know teaching was possible yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing because actually the best way to to learn is try to teach someone uh, the, the skill that you're learning i know that even you know the big bigger companies uh, in google they have the culture that basically says that they can learn anything um, and they can spend their time on learning anything they want. Uh, but uh, what they do is they put in a calendar the date that they will then later on uh, try to teach someone the skill that they learned. And this is pretty mm. powerful. So basically, if you have the, the attitude towards learning that you will then later on have to pass this knowledge to someone else this is a great attitude because it won't let you you know skip uh, the hard parts and maybe comfort yourself with uh with things that you don't really know but it it has to, you you have to de dig dig uh, deeper and i think that was my attitude for for th this time so i tried to learn as much as i could and mm -hmm. um you know, believe it or not, but there was no YouTube when I w once I started or Facebook. So I started from like uh, IRC channels and some forums, and that, that was like a <laughs> long, long time ago. Mm. I'm not sure if, uh, if the listeners remember even, but it was really difficult to get the knowledge from the internet. So once I started learning, and then I I did a few commercial projects, working in an agency as a graphic designer and web designer. Then, then I realized that I need to somehow pass this knowledge because there is, you know, I, I just wanted to give back to the people who basically taught me those things over the internet. So, yeah, I don't have a formal um, IT education or something like this. I just learned by myself. And then mm -hmm. I think that I was a pretty good learner because I tried to just everything that I learned, I tried to pass on at some point to, to the people who needed it as well. So I think it's pretty effective. Mm. And then when it comes to, uh, you know, I love that. I love that you're taking those learnings from Google. Um, that's super interesting that they have that culture. I didn't know about that. But, um, but in terms of how you've structured your online learning and courses, um, you obviously teach some of them. And then 
did you start out selling these individually or did you go straight to creating a marketplace like Skillshare? So it, the beginnings, it is like, it's always hard to, uh, to, to, to say it so that someone can, um, can learn from it. I think it's pretty difficult to, uh, there's no like, you know, past events and past, uh, past, uh, things that can, can establish some kind of framework for the future. So I try mm -hmm. to make some useful, um, uh, points here, but, uh, this was just my way and I don't think it will work for anyone else at, at this point, because I was just, you know, starting with DVDs, come on. So yeah. that was pretty early. However, uh, I keep repeating this process over and over again and I, and I modify it because I, I, Part of me just loves teaching and I, I love doing that. Part of me is an, is an entrepreneur and I like running online businesses. But the, the thing with, uh, with teaching is, um, I think it's the, the, the most common thing someone can possibly do. You, you always have some kind of knowledge and uh, you can always pass this knowledge to, any, uh, to, to, to someone who will find this interesting. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, people can really start off by teaching others what they know. And this is really, really, you know, easy way to start off an internet business. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a great way to start. And also you don't have to like think that there are many other people who already teach the, the same thing. You want to teach JavaScript or whatever else people are teaching because you yourself, you have some kind of unique style and unique attitude towards this uh, this uh, topic. And people, there, there will be always always people who will listen to you, and you will resonate with some people. So I think mm -hmm. uh, teaching online is like super uh, easy way to get into online entrepreneurship, and also it's it's um, rewarding because people that you teach basically they they come back, they they say that they it maybe changed them their lives in some way uh so it's really re rewarding and i think it's pretty pretty cool thing to do even as, as a side project if you are running you know a SaaS company and uh you know just after hours you pass a bit of this knowledge it's really rewarding mm. yeah well we um yeah we definitely know about building online courses and that sort of stuff and how that is an easy way to start generating revenue online but so talk us through how you made your first thousand dollars online. It was selling DVDs or how, how did you make your first thousand? Yeah, uh, I think that, that it was through selling DVDs, but uh, okay. uh, in terms of my company, because I used to work for some other people uh, just designing websites and, and, and in an agencies. Uh, so I used to earn pretty early. And then I decided mm -hmm. to just uh, pass the knowledge for free after hours. But people kept, you know, saying that this is really quality knowledge, and they want more and more. So I tried to, I tried to carve a, a little bit of uh, my time, and then I just asked them for to pay me. But I, I repeat this process over and over again, and I launch a, a lot of different initiatives with, um, you, you know, more modern than DVDs, uh, and um, and run a lot of different websites with uh, learning resources. One of them being Learn UX, another is called as the how, which I recently ran about no code and automation software. So basically, mm -hmm. I, had, I, I just uh, kind of relaunched these educational projects once in a while. And there are some trends that are now really, uh, really cool. I think that, for example, if you want to uh, organize and host a course, uh, I think it's really useful to look at those cohort based courses right now. So people basically have a lot of different websites and resources to learn from like Udemy and course marketplaces, but uh, they tend to, um, um, you know, learn um, a little bit, a little bit better in groups and uh, cohort based courses. For example, if you organize and host a course that lasts for five weeks and uh, you try to, mm -hmm. to get a group and uh, put people on Slack or maybe some other uh, community, um, uh, you know, system like circle or something like that, mm -hmm. and then, um, you can pre-record the materials and, um, and, and this cohort based learning is really eff efficient. I, I run a lot of boot camps like this, a lot of initiatives like this, and it's really cool. And after the, the, the cohort, you, you also have a community or maybe at the beginning of the community and communities nowadays are also pretty cool thing to, uh, to think of like business wise and, uh, as a launchpad for all the initiatives that you have in terms of learning and products and something like that. So, mm. so this is pretty interesting. Like the approach with, uh, you know, selling a single course, it's not the, the approach that I'd recommend anymore. 
I think that mm -hmm. uh, creating those cohort-based courses and uh, helping people to get from point A to, to point B is much better idea for, you know, nowadays, and you can then keep them on, on community. So this is really powerful mm -hmm. in, in terms of online learning nowadays. Okay, so when you say that, so the way that you set this up is you, you pre-record the content which you're trying to teach, and then you say, okay, we're taking a mission, let's say we're taking 50 people in this quarter, and you do like quarterly sprints or something? Yeah, so usually, uh, yeah, the, the material is pre-recorded uh, so that they can uh, just watch the videos anytime they want in their own pace. That's, that's pretty important. And... Uh, there's always a community um, following this this idea. So there is a Slack channel, which is pretty efficient for for short uh, term, like five or six week cohorts, for example. Slack is pretty mm -hmm. cool, and um, they uh, they do get the access to the videos, to recordings, and also to to Slack. And um, and they uh, also have like in my cohorts, I also organize uh, meetups. Uh, like mm -hmm. those are. Like in person or like Zooms? Yeah, so so we have Zooms once a week. We have Zooms, okay. like uh, they can ask like AMA or something like that. And uh, then um, I have a little software that I wrote with uh, uh, masterminds. Those are groups. Uh, so for example, if I have 100 people within this, uh, this batch, I basically um, um, have a software that will split them into groups of, let's say five people and randomly mm. put them in one room on just a Saturday uh, evening and and they have some kind of challenge uh, that they tackle together mm -hmm. and they they just learn and uh, they they uh, they teach themselves that they learn together and they uh, they have this uh, challenge that they have to accomplish so so this is another f way of uh, having this uh, having these people you, you know just uh, getting to know each other and uh, maybe getting the, the, them a bit more involved in the in the process of learning yeah, it's super interesting because I think that also adds a lot of value to your course over other people's courses who aren't offering the community aspect. Um, and so when you give out that content, is that evergreen? They get access to that forever or is it only while they're in the, in the program? Yeah, so one thing I learned um, during the process of producing a lot of courses <laughs> is that mm -hmm. uh, it's better not to... Um, not to give the content for like forever to to give the access forever it will always mm -hmm. be there will always be people that will come to you after 5 or 10 years and request that content and i have that mm -hmm. i have people like from from 13 years ago they want to still still want to watch the flash course that they bought so <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny but and that technology doesn't exist anymore but but okay mm -hmm. um you know it's uh it's it's always better to um to to make uh like uh in, in, in this cohort idea uh you can charge a flat fee like you know 500 bucks for um for a participation in the course and uh that will give the access to the materials throughout the course and maybe for uh sometime after like half a year six months something like that and uh, right. also the, the materials, I, I keep them uh, uh, within the community. So there are a lot of different uh, things that you can use to host community, but one of them I'm using is Circle, that's circle.so. Mm -hmm. And on Circle, I can post those materials as uh, community posts. And uh, then you can upsell. The, basically, the idea is to, to later on, if you have the group of people that are willing to share and participate in this group, um, for a longer period, you can basically sell a subscription for um, for um, an additional subscription for uh, just mm -hmm. the community, mm, and it 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 works really well. I have uh, like now over a thousand people in, in community, and uh, they are willing to pay to just get the access to the materials, but also get to know the other people from other cohorts and stuff like this. Got it. So you would so would you suggest if you're a course creator? Uh, charging a monthly or annual fee versus charging a one-time fee? Really depends because um, if you have, when you're charging like subscriptions um, and uh, you'd have to constantly deliver the content, it, it really depends on the type of content that you want to create and produce. If you have an ongoing mm -hmm. course that you're going to develop and you're going to keep the community around it, you can think of a subscription but mo for most of the time, you'll, you'll stick to the flat fee model, at least um, at the beginning when they enter the course, 
so that they, they get the knowledge that they want in a bigger package for a bigger price. And that's a fat mm -hmm. fee. And um, and the subscription model is, I guess, is in, in this in this uh, kind of business is just an upsell to, let's say, community or maybe some, uh, you know, updates to the course or something like that. Mm, OK, but then how do you remove the access to people after you've you know done a one time fee? Yeah, so uh, you you can do a one time fee, but you basically say that that the allows you to to access the content for for 12 months, for example. And this is how mm. it works. Okay. And then you just manually go through and delete people who are. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no. Um, and so, so another big part of, and, and one of uh, the most exciting things I, I, I work with for the past years is automation and uh, different no code tools. <laughs> and uh, so, so I have, uh, I have a few people around who help me, but I also have a few mm. hundred of, of robots who basically take care of, almost all the aspects are of, of my online businesses. And uh, wow. having a framework of launching uh, different products, th those can be educational products or, or some other, maybe info, you know, info product is something that you can easily uh, make nowadays. Uh, you can, um, if you have, uh, you know, some great articles or a little bit of knowledge or maybe something that you can record and make a course out of it, it's super easy to launch it because you just need maybe a notion uh you know notion mm -hmm. is, is awesome for launching courses and i i have I, I run those cohorts actually on on notion with within the notion calendar i have everything set up i don't really oh, wow. need a, a platform but then on mm -hmm. top of that you have uh, you have zapier and integromat and you have different no code tools and those basically help me to run all of this uh, you know things together and uh, those are run automatically so starting from uh, onboarding people in uh you know all the uh, all the billing ish billing things like invoicing and stuff like this uh marketing uh also onboarding people into the course and then deleting their accounts and stuff like this i have it all mm -hmm. automated so i basically work on the tools that uh, have an option to to connect through the uh, through their apis and then uh, I use Integromat or Zapier to basically, you know, just exchange information between those tools. Mm -hmm. So the simple funnel might be, you know, someone enrolls in the course and then I will, I would automatically uh, receive this information and uh, do something with it. So, for example, send a Slack mm -hmm. message uh, to the proper channel to the pe to people who will just make the manual onboarding. But also, I will send out an email, and uh, then on top of that, I'll create a Circle account and the invitation, and al also I'll create an um, account on my platform that will automatically uh, issue the access to the courses. So, basically, it all happens automatically thanks to thanks to those robots. Some of them I have coded but most of them i just have running on on zapier and similar software like this wow that's really interesting and i'm sure it was a nightmare to set up but now that you've set it up it's probably super convenient and saves you so many hours of work um because that does bring me to my next question i was going to say how do you like for the people starting out building courses right now you know what would be where would you host your courses and where would you do all this it sounds like you've got like a kind of like broken down segmented uh automation set up for this but if you were to start today what mm -hmm. would you what would you sort of uh how would you set up your courses with you know this community aspect as well and then the automations for um you know deleting people after 12 months and making sure that your content is kind of gated uh properly so so you have to first remember how this how, how the uh, whole course is being like how how do you have the selling process of the course set up? Because this is quite crucial. Nowadays, you don't really record the course and then hope for the best. Um, once I used to sell DVDs on Amazon, that was pretty much it, you know? <laughs> I just burned the DVD and put it online and uh, yeah, people would buy because th there was no other stuff to buy. But now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but now basically what you have to do is prepare uh, for the launch of this course and the marketing part is I think it's it's a bigger part than actually you know recording the course and creating the content. So this is mm. something you should account for. And um, if you play uh, things right, you'd have to. I, I'd be I'd be on this lean side of things all the time, and I'll test my course first. So basically, mm. the, 
good idea is to set up a simple landing page and you can do it using let's say card or maybe you know squarespace wix or webflow whatever but card is like super simple and uh and it's really it's really great for just creating a simple course that will uh, let people leave an email if they are interested in your uh in your idea and mm -hmm. then, then probably on this landing page explain the idea of the course if that's a cohort based course just uh make a like a, a, extensive information about what you're planning to do how you how you want to organize it uh, you don't really need to record everything in advance uh, you just need mm -hmm. to create a launch campaign that will give you the you know the confirmation and the the validation of your idea so just create an mvp of the it's, it's like you know with the products that you that you create and uh, on the internet mm -hmm. it's the same with the course you just create a landing page you just explain your idea and with this mvp you try to advertise this website as to as many channels as you can and then see if mm -hmm. it sticks you know if you if you can see that people are subscribing and you have 100 or 200 people uh potentially uh, you can just uh you know call those people or just email them and ask um for for the specific content that they need uh, that's great, mm -hmm. but if you see that it, it's not really sticking, uh, you know, it's uh, people are not willing to to take part. It's it's probably just best to drop it. But once you have the, the this initial traction with this, let's say pre-launch list, uh, then you would uh, obviously it's it's always better to create one or two lessons so that they can see they can sample what would be inside. And once you have mm -hmm. the validation, you can just start creating the course and this. Uh, if you want to create a video course like a classic one you just record on your own probably everyone knows how to how to record nowadays uh strange times we live in but but uh, but at least they taught us how to record and uh, have a good quality of, of <laughs> the <course. Western> prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah so so then you then you can start recording but it doesn't stop you from selling it um so mm -hmm. uh, again I'm, I'm a huge fan of like okay i have the list of potential clients so let's see how they convert because uh, you know the the thing that they left the email here it's not really uh confirmation yet of the success of my of my future course so once mm -hmm. i record a few more lessons i can just you know let them let them connect their uh, credit card and pay for um, like a super discounted pre uh, pre uh, pre release price uh, mm -hmm. like a 50 or 60% off uh, so so that i can see how much people can i get from 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 this initial cohort from this initial group right and uh mm -hmm. this will this will let you validate the idea uh further if you have like you know less than probably i don't know five or ten percent success with that with with this already engaged group of yours and the least size mm -hmm. is not important i think that you know, for most of the time, for me, uh, the, the small, the smaller list, uh, the better results. So, so you, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to give up because you only have 200 emails. The thing is mm -hmm. that if you have 200 emails, you'd better have a topic that's niche enough to charge a thousand bucks for it. Okay, for for the course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then and then you you can be you can be fine. You know, if if this if this is niche enough to to, to charge a lot. And people need this knowledge. Probably, you, you might have 500 people, and 400 out of 500 will will subscribe to your course. So, okay. um, you should try to charge as as early as, as possible, and you can do it with this card website as well. You just connect a card to Stripe. You just set up Stripe account, and it's super easy. You know, it's it's really it's really easy, and you can do it manually. Then, if you want to host the entire thing. You can use uh, just a ready-made platform that's uh, that, that will allow you to host courses. For example, you can use Kajabi or you can try Podia, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can try Teachable. Those are platforms that will let you upload the content and lock it. Um, also, take payments. And uh, this is pretty good start. You know, you don't have to create your own, own platform. And you don't have to be like me to, you know, just uh, create 500 robots out of, out of the, out of the blue because you know it's useless at the beginning. If you don't have confirmation yet, just, uh, just uh, the, the the main thing is not to get, not to get technical about it, because mm -hmm. um, if you if you test it on even lower quality and you know a crappy website and a crappy system, and people will still confirm that's a good idea and 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 give you their money. 
uh, for the course. It's the best confirmation. You know, from there you can only get better. You can only get better platform and get more clients. But if you make it shiny from the beginning uh, and uh, the course is crap and no one wants it, you know, it, <laughs> you waste a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're very familiar with those platforms because Hiax is, does exactly the same. Um, we, uh, we noticed that pain point and so we built something that oh. allows people to do all in one and uh, get it up super quickly. So definitely very familiar with, um, awesome. with that space and, and the pain points that a lot of course creators go through. But I was wondering, so you seem to like, you've created like seven to eight of these now, pretty successful, um, you know, definitely gone big and created some really big courses and then gone niche down. Um, what do you think is the standout factor that makes your courses sell versus all the others? Because there's so many courses on like, you know, UX, UI yeah. or development and that sort of stuff. So why do you think your course sells better than, than anybody else's? Um, I'm not sure if they say sell, sell better. <laughs> it's uh, but but yeah, um, I have like uh, a lot of a lot of different courses for for this Polish website, this Polish Skillshare, which is Edweb. We have over um, 500 courses right now. We have 200,000 clients. It's a it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big, big thing. Yours is selling well. <laughs> yeah, but but for the but for the ones that I run, uh, you know, it might be average. Uh, you can uh, you can earn uh, ten thousand or twenty thousand uh, bucks a month with uh, probably you know just fair enough, a good, well enough course, and uh, putting uh, putting some marketing on it, uh, like uh, you know, just being yourself. Probably this this works the best for me because uh, personally, I I just. Uh, I don't like all the marketing stuff around it, so I try to automate it. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm just being myself outside, and um, for some people it resonates well, and the word is big enough to just uh, to just uh, you know earn quite a lot from from a single project like this. But, but I think that uh, if you if if I can name uh, one or, or two factors, it's probably the quality of content is is really really well thought out and. Uh, it's mm -hmm. standing out. So what I try to do is just create the content that would be 10 times better than any other content on, on the web on the topic that I'm talking about, or mm -hmm. just create, or, or maybe just create a content on something that's, that's niche enough and, um, you know, hyped enough and, and, and really cool that doesn't have a lot of coverage on the web. So, uh, for example, I started this codeless.how website with, uh, with the beginning of no code co culture on the, and, and this automation mm -hmm. code culture, and actually you can learn a very lot from there. Yeah, it went mm -hmm. it went very popular. Actually, uh, that popular. So so I I decided to make it free because uh, I wanted more people to <laughs> to to just uh, get acquainted with this no code and automation thing because I think it's it's so awesome. It saves me yeah like thousands of uh, you know hours and and hundreds of thousands of dollars probably. Um, and and it lets you like really really uh, test um, test uh, online businesses pretty fast. So so that one, for example, if you if you check out Coldless How that How, this is uh, something that was pretty niche at the time, but something that I saw really huge potential in, and I decided mm -hmm. to just iterate iterate on it, and and that was good. On the on the other side, you have Learn UX, which is like UX is super popular topic on the, on the on yeah. the web. So I just try to approach those courses uh, so that they are better they, than anything else. And I made this uh, with like just, I think better, um, like better organization of the content itself. But also I tried mm -hmm. uh, those courses to, to be technically as good and polished as possible. So I have uh, like good environment here. So I have studios in, in Poland. Uh, we, we have this big thing around so I can take mm -hmm. advantage and. Also, if you have some leverages like that, you, sh you should definitely use them. And uh, mm -hmm. I could take advantage of that and, you know, record in 4K quality with really great examples. But that was the call for the UX courses. And that's also part partly because I know that UX and UI people, those people think visually they, they want to see beautiful course. You know, they want yeah. to see beautiful example in the course. On the other mm -hmm. hand, you have you know marketers. They they might not be interested in that at all. So th they want something else mm -hmm. that that would make this course ten times better. So okay, so you're thinking about yeah. the customer too. Yeah, mm. that's right. Interesting. No, that's really good. And then I've got to ask, what are your top three automations? Like the three automations you've 
found that just save you so much time and money? What are your th three favorites? Oh, shit, I have so, so many of them that, um, wow, but those would be probably um, automations um, connected to things that I hate doing myself. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that would be, that would be everything billing, you know, and everything, uh, social media and, and marketing stuff. So I basically mm -hmm. have automations that will just, um, okay, so that, that might be interesting. So for, for all, all of the content that I have, I have this huge database of content in one Airtable base. So th mm -hmm. there's like hundreds of records and those records are split into like tiny sections where I have like for, if you have a course description, okay? So you create a course on uh, whatever, creating podcasts, and then mm -hmm. you uh, just make a description of the course you have some selling points, you have some, uh, some you know, introduc introduction text or something like that. So I split it into different, um, uh, into different cells in Airtable so that I have little bits and pieces of content that later on my automation can glue together and, for example, post in social media. So that I don't have to, you know, uh, I have a little introduction here and that would be awesome for like Facebook, okay? The next thing mm -hmm. I have would be great for Twitter because it's short enough. The next thing I have is an image and I will take this image and post it on LinkedIn, you know, and this helps me. Like I have robots that will just take the content and distribute the content to whatever social media I want them to do. And also mm -hmm. they will iterate on that content. So in a week or two, or maybe half a, half a year, the same robot can go back to this old content and repost it, okay? So make this content wow. evergreen and I, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to, you know. Uh, it's always just... something being posted, yeah. Yeah, so so that, that might be really useful automation. The other ones uh, I mentioned are uh, probably connected to billing and, and all the customer mm -hmm. support. So, you know, automatic invoices. And then I also have uh, automations that will get all the invoices that I get on my inbox and just uh, package it to my accountant and something like that. So those are really useful for me because I just hate doing that myself. But uh, I have a lot of uh, different, like, super exciting automations, like uh, really... You know, crazy ones, uh, the ones that uh, that can be, uh, and and those are not only uh, in the business part of of, of the things. Uh, uh, for example, if I if I have a meeting in my calendar scheduled, mm -hmm. there's an app on iPhone called um, Script. I don't know how how is it called in in English. It might be Scripts. Yeah. Might be or yeah. However, it 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 will let you so it knows that I'm in my car. So when I start driving, it checks my calendar if I have any meeting. Um, okay. And if I have a meeting within an hour or so, it knows that I'm I'm probably going to that meeting. So it will take the so it will take the map and it will check the ETA when I arrive. It will send out the the text message to the person I'm I'm going to meet wow. with that I'm going to be there at some so. This thing, you know, the, the automation thing, you can you can go much further with, with that. And yeah, and, uh, and I, I just, uh, some of the ideas that I told you are on Codeless and I, I just recorded them mm -hmm. as free courses so that anyone can just see the potential because it's really huge. It's, it's helping me a lot. Yeah, because I know that was kind of the concept behind If This Then That, the website where you kind of like piece together all these different things. Yeah. I remember back in the day, I started looking at all of that sort of stuff, but the problem was like, you know, the APIs would change or the connections would break, or whatever. And then I would just like slowly just forget to go back and update them, that sort of thing. But yeah. I can definitely see the value in that. And, you know, I still think like if they can, like, you know, it sounds like you're already doing this with a multiple uh, of other tools, but, you know, if this, then that was kind of like the pioneers of what I thought the automation was going to go towards. Yeah, you were there at the very forefront of the of the automation, probably because, uh, like, uh, to, to the new approach of automation that's closer to 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 people. Because uh, there is also RPA and other you know enterprise automations going on, but this is uh, something really different. And for for starting people starting their their own businesses, automation is like the the biggest leverage nowadays. It's the biggest mm -hmm. leverage they can get because they they can really aim to uh you know fight with the biggest uh the biggest uh, companies out there thanks to automation and i'm pretty confident that we'll live up to the day uh when someone will create a like a like a unicorn company like a billion company 
just on their mm. own as a one person and a lot of robots around them because mm. this is already uh, happening and i think that someone you know who's trying to start any kind of business uh, like this might be you know courses but i'm using this in my saas and fintech businesses as well uh, definitely you should check out automation because this is something that gives you a leverage and uh, tools like Zapier, probably Airtable, Integromat, Webflow also. Um, mm -hmm. There are many more uh, tools like this uh, that will help you just, uh, you know, the APIs are there and uh, why should you just, you know, create your own mailing software when, you you know, there's MailChimp or, or SendGrid that has a great API and will let you just send the emails instantly. So, so mm. this is something that you can leverage on and basically all the, all the huge companies, they have to write it uh, themselves. They have to hire hundreds of people to just manage the software. But what mm -hmm. you can do is just use the little bits and pieces and and glue them together. And connect them. Yeah. yeah, connect them. Like the 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 evolution of if this then that. That's that's my favorite automation tool is Integromat. Okay. Uh, it's like Zapier, but it's it's cheaper than Zapier and and it's much more powerful. So basically, okay. it will let you connect all those tools together. If you have a bit of knowledge about how HTTP and uh, API works, uh, you can even mm -hmm. create your own HTTP calls. So connect to the tools that are not even, you know, in the catalog of Integromats. So yeah, this is like this is big. This is this is big, and uh, I'm trying to also teach people how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, for example, right now I'm on. I'm I'm trying to. Because I've automated, I've just had a process of automating all of my YouTube channels, and wow. um, and I, I've created. How many YouTube channels do you have? Oh, I have uh, eight or, or nine YouTube channels that are pretty like pretty that that have that have over ten thousand people. Uh, wow. So so I try to I try to automate them so that I again I have this one source of truth for all the of the content, and I have those automations that uh, will help me. You can think of different uh, scenarios, even for uh, for earning for for creators. If you're a YouTube creator, uh, imagine you have an option to just have everything uh, in Airtable as records. Mm -hmm. So you have every 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 video that you have on YouTube, and then you have every miniature, every cover of your video, and then you have mm -hmm. tools like um, Banner Bear or mm, the one. Uh, uh, yeah, like Banner Bear that will let you generate the the, the covers from HTML template that you that you previously created, mm, okay. and then and then what happens is you can just change all of the covers of your YouTube videos in an instant. Like mm. uh, you press the button and then you change all of the covers. So for for example, I had this um, marketing campaign with one of my partners, and mm. I changed all of the descriptions and all of the all of the covers for a week on my channel instantly so wow. that they, they have you know the and the, the marketing opportunities are are huge so so when you combine mm -hmm. automation with 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 the things that you'd um, you know they they just open uh the the possibilities for you to to think of the existing channels that you have that you already have to just monetize them in in a completely different way yeah it's crazy because like re-uploading all of your thumbnails on youtube would yeah. take days that's crazy <laughs> if you yeah. had that that, that's how it started actually yeah. uh, the partner came to me and and he, he said he wants to do it but <laughs> I, I I just uh, figured out that uh, I'd have to you know let my assistant do it and and she'll still do it for three days and um, mm, yeah. I, I hate uh, you know I hate, I uh, hate you. she quit yeah yeah <laughs> she gave me she quit so so I had to figure this out so in the process of figuring this out I just discovered that okay this this can go a lot further for example mm -hmm. i can automatically promote the content that i post on youtube on different social channels i can repost the content i can create miniatures i can create covers i can do everything automatically um, and then on top of that i just recorded that as a video as a course and and just put it on coldless it's on youtube.coldless at how and um, and so that everyone can can just check check out the process and even get the blueprints uh, of the um, automations and uh, import them into Zapier or Integromat. So it's super easy. Yeah, that's unbelievable the amount of repurposing you do and how how clever you've thought about all of this to automate so much. And then not only like just create the automations, but then monetize that <laughs> through a course as well. It's, uh, it's very impressive. 
That's what, um, what, it sh what it should help you with. So the aim of the automation, the, the whole point of it, is so that you can mm -hmm. earn more, but also so that you can just focus on content. Because being, a, let's say, YouTube creator uh, will let you spend, you know, eight hours on creating a description and tags and cover, while you can just use those eight hours to create another video or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. just so or automation. Better, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, it, it will let you focus on, on, on what's really important and what's your core, core skill. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely check that out and link it in the show notes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you've had a lot of successes, a lot of wins. What are some big mistakes you made along the way with you know building up these seven companies um, or even just on the YouTube side, building you know seven plus uh, channels with 10,000 plus subs? Uh, what were some of the mistakes you made along the way that you're trying to avoid if you did it all again? Yeah, I do mistakes every day. I think that um, without, and it's it's also a tough question because um, then I try to, for example, I, when I when I see someone doing something clearly clearly, you know, wrong. I mean, something that I m the same mistake I made. When I try to talk that person out of it, <laughs> I see that it, it it's just not working. You know, so mm -hmm. so for most of the time, you will still have to learn uh, yourself. It's you know, books are full of. Uh, mistakes people made and and uh, podcasts are full of, of of you know business pitfalls stuff like this mm -hmm. but uh for most of the time you just have to do it uh yourself and then uh you'll learn from it i think uh mm -hmm. we we you know doing mistakes is is just the best thing out there that, that can happen if you if you do mistakes uh, mistakes it means you try and this is the actual moment of learning making a mistake mm -hmm. is a moment of learning uh so so even if you try to learn something, you know, by heart or learn something from a book or something like that, if you won't put it in practice and basically just uh, try to figure out an example scenario of this of this uh, situation that you're learning about, uh, you won't make mistake. You won't learn. You won't recall. So I think mistakes are good, and this is the the, the, the most important part. And uh, the second thing is I don't. Uh, put much you know i don't uh, really care that much about the mistakes so i i don't have like a list of 100 mistakes i made because mm -hmm. i just think that when you make a mistake uh, you 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 it will be so it is so harmful to your ego and uh that you will remember that forever okay and you will never yeah. make make that again probably you'll never make it make that again so so i think that people Unfortunately, have to do uh, this uh, themselves, and I don't have a, a complete list. But I'm I'm just making mistakes every day, and probably mm -hmm. um, the the things that we can talk about is not the mistakes, the, 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 like the actual uh, you know wrongdoings, but the uh, the thing that's in your head that's that might be a mistake in the mindset, because. This is more like tangible for for people who are starting out or trying to just create uh, new businesses. They do have a problem with with their their mindset in terms of business, in terms of uh, probably the biggest one is how much to charge. So, I mm -hmm. uh, I used to always charge um, less than I should. <laughs> now I either give uh, content for free or I just char charge a lot. Like. You know, it's like um, I try to charge a lot, and um, I think that the, the the best thing that that can just uh, you can realize as a founder or as a course creator or any any you know person who is just trying to sell something on the internet is just try to ra raise your prices. If I could, I'd do it uh, earlier <laughs> and see mm -hmm. what happens. Uh, this will, uh, like in all my projects, it, it usually just gives me the revenue boost and also I get better clients because I charge, uh, you know, more. And so this is one, one maybe advice that the, and, and the mistake I, I did. Another mm -hmm. one is a lot of different collaborations. And, uh, if you have limited resources, like, uh, you're, you're in the project on your own, probably getting into a lot of like meetings and collaborations and something that someone might do for you will not work mm. out as you'd expect uh, in the mm. bigger, bigger picture. You know, you'd have to think that everyone has some kind of agenda for them. Probably it's, if it's business, it, it's like, you know, they want to 
just uh, make their business better. <laughs> Tick. Yeah. Um, okay. So so probably at the beginning, I'd really I'd really um, be re I'd really be nose down in the product, and there are a lot of different mm -hmm. examples of people who are just executing perfectly on that. Uh, one of them being uh, Kevin from Retool, which is a no code tool. Um, okay. Yeah, Retool is a, a tool that will let you create internal tools uh, in uh, with with ready made components. So one of the things that people hate about uh, their, their develop developer job in uh, bigger companies is creating these internal tools, which is basically eighty percent of the software for enterprise. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the tools that will won't be used for, by, by their clients, but but sales representatives and stuff like that. So so Riddle basically will let you create this faster, and uh, this is a great idea. Uh, I know that uh, now uh, Retool is is uh, worth the, the valuation is about one billion. So, um, and I knew the and I I I, I just um, uh, I was um, um, in the process. I, I was watching Retool once Kevin started that, and he he was not going into any collaborations and you know podcasts and stuff like that. He was just nose down in the product, mm -hmm. and <laughs> that really worked out. Yeah, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Like most of the time, you can obviously get lucky. You can get lucky. You can get. You can go to all of the conferences. You can, you know, meet someone that will really help you along the way. But this is just getting lucky, and uh, I prefer hard work than getting lucky because it it will in, in the long run it will just give you better results. Um, and yeah. if you get lucky along the way, that's perfect. That's great that's for nice. you. Yeah. <laughs> So, so maybe this yeah, is super interesting. And this, the third one is probably yeah. The, I have third one also. So um, the one I've been suffering from um, uh, a while ago uh, was worrying too much. Like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that uh, you know the product has to be perfect and all these things connected to you know people's comments that appear and uh, if someone something goes wrong, especially if you're a course creator. And someone will, you know, just uh, comment your course, and, and and he doesn't like it or she doesn't like it. So mm. it will get into your brain, you know, under your skin. And um, uh, now I don't worry. Uh, I'm just, you know, super optimistic, and I I tend to if something's wrong, I just okay, that's wrong, you know. Uh, Thick skin now. Yeah, life <laughs> life goes on, and uh, like the bigger picture, it it won't really matter, you know. Uh, so I'm thinking if, if in the um, in a year, if you think about that situation, would it matter? No, it wouldn't. You know, so mm -hmm. just yeah. go along. And I think that founders, in general, <laughs> they worry too much. They they worry too much, mm -hmm. and they also want to keep their product so perfect and so polished that they just continue working on every single feature that people. On this is also a mistake I, I made a lot. Uh, so people mm -hmm. were asking me, feature requests. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so feature requests, and I just you know. Uh, kept kept doing those features while uh, then I realized that I have uh, eighty percent of features that only you know five percent of people use. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is also a thing, I guess. Yeah, no, we definitely come across that a lot. So we've created this is us now three SaaS products, um, and you know everybody wants something unique, pretty much that fits their exact situation. But uh, it's it's not always in the best interest of your own product to go and you know build all of those out um so i totally agree with that last point um sure if you take but, a look at twitter they they still don't have you know editing uh message editing or something like that they still don't have yeah. tons of feature that people request okay and they are yeah. doing just fine yeah it still works <laughs> yeah yeah um, I'm going to definitely take a look at Hi-X because uh, i just came across it and um it looks like it might help uh uh, me and uh, some other people that I teach uh, in, in promoting and selling their, their products. So definitely we'll yeah. check that out. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then on that note, I wanted to say, you know, thank you so much for joining. You've shared so much. I'm definitely going to go look at all that no-code automation stuff. Um, yeah. All of our listeners should definitely check that out as well. Um, Greg, where can we find more about all the things that you're doing? Um, you know, I know you've got a lot going on, <laughs> so so let us know where we can find out more about this stuff and where we can connect with you, find your courses, uh, you know, learn more from you. Um, we'd love to know. 
Yeah, sure. So the, the two um, the two side projects I mentioned are LearnUX.io and uh, Codeless.how. And uh, you can just uh, reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at uh, Greg Rog um, on Twitter, and I'm I'm not there very often. But if you just DM me, I'll, I'll just... you get an automation back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in a week or two, I probably I probably reply. So just uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry not to be there all the time, but uh, for most of the time, I'm I'm really nose down in products and projects that I create. Mm -hmm. So I just like use uh, use it uh, wisely and from time to time, but yeah. feel free to, to just DM me on Twitter. No, it's a good idea because social media can just consume entire days worth. If you are, if you're trying to stay on top of it and constantly posting, replying and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I think everybody listening, main takeaway, build a great product, build something people want, and then the, uh, the, the rest will follow. Yeah. That's, that's my story. At least <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Greg. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Blitz Growth Podcast. For more, hit up blitzgrowth.com.